Welcome back to Luke Rod Motor Services. Today I'm working on a daily commuter car. This is a 2012 Chevy Cruze RS 1.4 cylinder turbo car automatic. This one has uh, about 181,000 miles on it and I just bought it for one of my tenants who needs a car because um, if they can't get to work they can't pay me rent. So I'm going to uh, put a motor in this and then uh, my tenant's going to buy it from me. Should make them a pretty good car. It's rust free. Uh, other than somebody using a Brillo pad to clean the hood off, it's, uh, it's in pretty good shape really. New brakes, good tires. I picked it up for the right amount of money. And pretty soon here it'll be time for me to run over yeah, pretty soon it'll be time for me to run over and grab the engine from the salvage yard because I'm just going to pull the engine out of this car and replace it as a unit. It's been grossly overheated, so it's got to come out and be replaced. So if you want to watch some of the process of engine replacement, stick around. Ah, where to put my tool? No, I'm not that strong. It was loose yesterday and I set it on there to see if it would start and it would not start. It said, no, I'm not gonna start. I don't have any compression. So I said, okay, we'll just pull it out and replace it. All right. Should probably put the battery on the charger going on with that guy. Battery tray comes out pretty simple. Looks like it's three bolts. Maybe four. It has an amp meter. It must be able to tell you when your alternator is not charging. That's kind of cool. It used to be really nice when we had connectors of just unplug the connector and take the whole harness out with the engine. We got away from that again. Now they've got them all tangled into the car. Think I lift out or? It does. Let's just pull you out there. Easy peasy. So the idea here is to get this done today since it's my day off. <laughs> I think I may go ahead and replace the radiator, the water pump, and the thermostat while I'm at it. There's nothing better than putting an engine in a car and having a radiator rupture and blow up your new motor. Just throw that on the ground, I guess. Get that later. Battery tray is loose. It's a GM car, 13s and 10s everywhere. Eights apparently. That's an interesting fuse. Oh, those are trapped nuts. That's cool. Sometimes these fuses blow and it takes the car out. That's one big fuse. There's a fuse there, a fuse there, and fuses across there. Always check your fuses. There we go. I bet that guy's expensive. Boy, they don't make these plastic clips easy to get out. time use. They don't want you fixing these things. They want you to throw them away and buy a new one. I'm too cheap for that. I got toy cars to spend my money on. 
Oh, they squeeze in from the sides. All right. Know what you're working with, I guess. A learning curve. <clears throat> what else is hanging on here? Oh, that guy. What'd you do, Richard? Win, win, I'm telling ya. One way or the other, I always win. Alright, now we have access to our bell bolts. One, two, three. Hey, there's the foil filter. You couldn't have put that in a worse place. I guess they could have. All right, well, it's actually time that I can run over to the salvage yard, so I'm gonna take a break on this. Fire up the old 6-0 flatbed and run over to one of my local scrap yards and pick up a 83,000 mile 1.4 turbo motor. I'll be right back. Well, I've got my new to me engine. Uh, got a couple of oil leaks, 83,000 miles. Came out of a stick shift car, so I'll have to change the flywheel over. But the turbo's nice and tight, and uh, other than a couple of oil leaks, I think it'll be just fine. Let's get it back to the shop, get it off the back of the truck. <laughs> All right. So my trip to the junkyard was successful. Although it took a lot longer than I had expected. The uh, yard I went to is actually, they've, they've actually cleaned that yard up quite a bit. It's uh, Cantley's downtown in the hood. Um, nice place. The lady I spoke to at the desk was very pleasant. Um, it just, they didn't have the engine separated from the transmission, so I had to wait for them to do that. No big deal, they were busy with other stuff. I wandered around the lot, snapped some photos of the stuff sitting there. Uh, they've actually cleaned that lot up quite a bit since the last time I've been there. They're uh, working on making some improvements. Um, but it's Cantley's down on Little Street in central Columbus. Good little place, affordable parts. Uh, they found me a 1.4 turbo out of a 2014 Cruise. But it's a stick shift, so I'll have to pull the clutch and flywheel and change, change the old flywheel over. It's got a couple small oil leaks. Looks like the common ones from the cam sensors, so I'll put new O-rings on those. Um, I'll probably put a valve cover gasket on it just to be safe, but we'll see. I have the stuff here to fix it. Uh, this thing, the AC is now evac. I'm actually going to disconnect the hoses from the compressor, pull the compressor on the engine, because when I do that, I can just leave the belt on and then I can change the new belt that's on this over to the other engine, put it all together. I'll have to use this compressor and this alternator because the engine comes stripped of those items. And that's fine because I typically use the stuff that's on the car anyway. Um, I haven't seen this turbo yet, but I've definitely got oil in the intake. There is no coolant whatsoever in this car. Uh, so I have to figure out where the coolant uh, left the reservation on this, but we'll figure that out. I'll probably find that it has a bad radiator, which is fine. I have a radiator here for it if I need it. I have all my electrical stuff disconnected. I'm getting ready to pull my bell bolts. I have a couple connectors down underneath to do yet. I need to pull this front motor mount because it blocks one of my bell bolts. But, we're moving right along. And that's just what you do. You keep taking nuts and bolts. Oh, those were longer. You pay attention to your nuts and bolts because they put different length ones in different places. So that one's long. That one goes in the top spot. We're going to put a paint mark on that guy.
It's three different bolts for three different holes. Those two are the same length. But this one's got a NASCAR starter on it instead of a cross threads better than no thread starter on it. That long one came out of there. I'm going to mark that so that I don't forget with some paint. Let's see if I can remember where I had my paint, paint pen last. Look at that, it was right where I left it. So that guy's a long one. We're gonna paint we're gonna paint the bell housing and the bolt yellow for that hole. That guy was in the back, and this one was in the front. We got one more way down in there. I have to turn the air on and annoy everybody with my air compressor so that I can use my air ratchet. Those look like 15s. They are 15s. So if I pull both of those guys and that front motor mount should be able to get to that bell. Doesn't look like there's another bell under the oil filter. So let's take those two bolts out and then we will put the car up in the air and take off what we need to from underneath. I think I have all my hoses off. Oh, I can crack my AC because I just got done evacing that. It also looks like a 15. Probably just do that one with a wrench because it's easy enough to get to. Oh, it's not a 15. It must be a 13. Front motor mount, bell bolts, torque converter bolts. And front mount. I can't get on that with that. Time to put on the noise maker. <laughs> Stupid gravity. That's better. <laughs> really good way to take the skin off your fingers, knuckles. Yep, okay, so let's put this thing up in the air. Take that motor mount off, and then I got a couple electrical connectors to remove. Get my torque converter bolts out. It's ready to pop. Take my light. Oh, bright. Shine it right in your eyes, Rich. That's brilliant. Up says me. Oh, there's a the heater hose I missed. Man, that guy is not wanting to come off. You're gonna make me bleed, aren't you? Got it. Gravity? Nope. Got it. 
Now I'm grabbing it. Gravity, I win. So yeah, talking about some of the normal stuff we do here. So that's a Honda Elantra with 44,000, 45,000 miles. Um, four wheel disc brake pads and rotors. Brake flush, coolant flush, basically some maintenance and some brakes. Got a 2013 pickup back here. Um, that one came in, the guy thought he needed a transmission. And I'm like, well, why do you need a transmission? And he's like, well, it just doesn't shift right. I'm like, is the engine light on? He's like, no. Well, why don't you bring it in and let me take a look at it and see what's wrong with it before we waste any time talking about a transmission. So we brought it in, no codes, no engine lights. Drives actually really well, but it's got a vibration. I'm like, hmm. So I called him up. I'm like, hey, I'd like to pull your drive shaft and check the, check the U-joints because even though I don't see anything loose or hear anything, I, I think maybe the problem is actually a binding U-joint or maybe a, a rear differential problem. So like, okay, so we pulled the drive shaft and sure enough, it's got a, a U-joint binding. So we're going to put U-joints in it, verify the vibration's gone, make sure everything drives good. And then uh, we're going to do some maintenance on that one. I heard a wheel bearing humming, transmission service, fluid and filter. Um, it's got a hundred and... 73,000 miles on it. It's a beautiful truck. No rust. I like, dude, totally fix this truck. Keep this thing on the road. Um, the old Falcon there came to me for uh, no running. Put points in it. Figured out somebody removed the resistance wire. So I have a resistor block coming for it. I'm going to wire a resistor block into the points so that it has the proper voltage drop. There, that car only calls for 6.6 .6 volts to be delivered to the coil. Uh, otherwise, you have too much, too much, too much voltage going through the points. It'll burn up the points prematurely. So, you know, just normal stuff. <laughs> and I'm working on a motor on a, sorry, an engine replacement on a cruise. This thing's actually super clean. Like, I feel good that I'm saving this one from the crusher. Rear tires are brand new. These are probably a little more than halfway gone, but they'll do. Well, these things sure are leakers, aren't they? All right, that harness, is, that harness is off. Ah, it's looking like I got to pull my starter to get to my bell bolts. Sorry, to my torque converter bolts. So let's go ahead and remove our starter. Electric racks so no power steering fluid to spill all over the floor. That's a bonus. And I'm going to try and leave that mount in because once I have all of my bell housing bolts and my torque converter bolts out. I can just dangle it from a hoist and pull it as a unit. Very cool. All right, positive and negative is off. Starter lead, cam sensor, what's this other guy? Knock sensor, there's my knock sensor on the back side of the motor. We're free! One bolt connector could have made this a lot easier.
yeah, not too bad. Engine out service. So the junkyards just cut seat belts out of the cars they're parting out, and that's what they use to pull their engines and trannies in and out. Pretty brutal uh, process if you ever sit there and watch them. Some of these guys take these things apart. It's pretty medieval. This thing's got a bunch of busted parts on it, so I'm going to take them off. And I'll use the parts off of my engine that are still good. This water inlet housing is broken, so I'm going to have to transfer that over from my old engine. But I'll likely need a new seal for that, so I'll just pull it off of this one. I need to pull off the flywheel and pressure plate. And then I put my uh, flex plate on for the automatic transmission. And then I'll be one step closer to putting this fellow back into the car. I need my water pump. Let's see how bad that's going to be to do. Clean that surface off. Get that guy off. And let's get this flywheel off of here. It's a dual mass flywheel. But that's expensive to replace. That car was about to need a clutch at 83,000 miles. Somebody must not know how to drive a stick. Which is ironically why they sold the car, was because nobody knows how to drive a stick, so nobody wanted the car. It was a. It was actually a light front end damage, driver's side impact. So bumper, fender hood, light. The scrapyard got it. They put it out in the for sale bin for a complete car for a rebuilder for like three weeks, and not one person inquired about it. They're like, "Well, screw it. We're just going to scrap it." I got I got lucky because there weren't any of these in town, and since they decided to scrap it, and I called it the right time, I'm the lucky winner. Looking at that flywheel, doing a clutch on this car is probably going to be more than the car is worth. Dual mass flywheel. Looks good, it's not leaking. Got my dowel, got my dowel, so I think I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and install my flywheel flex plate. Once this guy's on. I'm ready to drop the engine back down. Well, you know what, I'm going to put a water pump on. There's my hole. And then, one more and then. It's a good thing I didn't play basketball. The old one's not noisy, but it does have a little bit of lateral movement on it. So I'm going to go ahead and change that just to be safe. been done. Somebody glued that one on. Maybe that's the way they come from the factory. I don't know. That might be the way they come from the factory. Of 
freaking hundred dollar electric thermostat. It's just dumb. I really like these carbide scrapers. But I'll tell you, you can tear up a gasket surface real quick with one of these. Alright, new water pump. The long ones go all the way through the front cover into the block. It does have some water in there. I'm going to draw this guy in slowly. You're not really supposed to use the bolts to pull the stuff together. It can cause a lot of damage that way. But my bits aren't lining up the way I'm expecting them to. So I'm using the bolts to kind of help my alignment. Pulled out. Had I drawn that down with the wrenches, it would have broken stuff. And then I'd have been crying in my Wheaties. Put that in one more time. That's the way they're supposed to fit. Flush. And on the dowel pins. Make sure you have the dowel pins where they need to be. Alright, from here, put our front motor mount on. And then we will put in our bell bolts. And then we will put in our torque converter bolts. Then our starter and everything else because it's basically the reverse process of what we started by taking it apart. I gotta run over to the over to the dealer when they open up and uh, grab a couple gaskets since my water out inlet housing was broken on the new engine. I don't want to reuse that gasket because it looks kind of ucky. sometimes things don't go the way you think they are. I was getting ready to put my starter in and then I remembered, hey, I haven't put my torque converter bolts in. 
Then I grabbed my torque converter bolts and only had two of them and I'm like, oh wait, I, I dropped one of those. And then I looked around on the floor because I thought it hit the floor and it didn't hit the floor. So it's it's up in the gear case. So I get to go fishing. Luckily for me, I found it. Got it. Sweet. So I'm going to put all three bolts in. Not tight, not snug, but all the way in so that I can rotate it. And once all three torque converter bolts are in, I will lock them down. Well, that could have been much worse of a scenario. So I ran over with the dealer, grabbed a couple seals, about $15 for the cam phase actuator seals and the outlet housing seal. I thought it was an inlet housing, but it's actually an outlet housing. It must be a reverse flow water system. This is our last bit, so we put this thing together. got the cat transferred over. I still need to tighten it up, but we are very close to making smoke with this thing. Or we're about to find out we got sold a bad motor and we got to do it all over. Put oil in it. One for the start. Have to hook up three exhaust bolts. Well, let's see, it'll start. Yippee! Yeah. Put on my cam seals. Look up my exhaust. Put some coolant in it. Well, that wraps up this session with uh, this 2012 Chevy Cruze 1.4 turbo. Should be a pretty good little commuter for the uh, new owners. Did quite a bit of work, a little bit more than what I thought I was gonna do. Um, new engine, well, used engine. Replacement engine, that's that's what we'll go with. I was lucky I found a 82,000-ish mile used engine. Put a new water pump, new thermostat. Put a couple oil seals on the front timing, uh, variable timing sensors. Or solenoids, I suppose they are. At any rate, I also put uh, new oil rings on the oil feed tube, and that solved all my oil leaks. Fresh coolant, pressure tested great. Took it for a drive, drove about 15, 20 miles. Everything seems to be good, so it's uh, time to cut this thing loose and let it move on down the line. But this is a lot more of the normal stuff that we do here. Uh, engine oil leaks water pumps, gaskets, cooling cooling system issues, brakes, tires, alignments, chassis work. That's that's the core of our business. At any rate, I wanted to show a little bit of behind the scenes on an engine replacement. Figured somebody might find it interesting. If not, they might find it a little educational. We'll see. Uh, please click like, subscribe, leave a comment below. You guys stay safe out there. Have a great night.